Hi, and welcome to the third episode of the How to Write an Essay video series. Today, I am going to be talking to you all about how to write the background or the narratio section of your paper. In a classical argument, right after the introduction or exordium, there is the narratio. And the narratio is the section of the speech or the paper where you are providing all the necessary background information to the reader or the audience. It's important to do this because the reader is kind of like the jury, like you are presenting to them all of the facts of the case. And then at the end, they're going to weigh in and basically uh, either agree or disagree with you. And that will depend on whether or not they find your case to be particularly compelling. This means that before you get into your argument, it's important that you present to the reader certain facts, certain uh, background information, an explanation of concepts that they need to know in order to understand your argument. What you don't want to do is to present an argument that the reader will not understand. This may include a concise narrative summary. If I am writing a paper about uh, a particular work of literature, if I was writing a paper about Hamlet and addressing a controversy about Hamlet's character, it's important that I, somewhere in the paper, include a very concise summary of some important plot points of certain, you know, trends within the development of his character. And I might do that in the narratio section. I could do some level of historical overview. Um, there are certain papers or speeches where it's just helpful to give people an understanding of how an idea has sort of developed over the course of time. Or the narratio can include further explanation of the controversy. And I want to say here that sometimes a paper doesn't have a designated narratio paragraph. It may be that the narratio is sort of contained within the exordium, within the introduction. Um, and it could be that alternatively, the narratio is the paragraph after the introduction that really does sort of piggyback off of some ground that was laid during the introduction. Um, so just be aware of that. Like, Make sure that your exordium and narratio work together. If you've already gone into a fair bit of uh, depth explaining the controversy in the exordium, nar your narratio can sort of build on that, but it doesn't have to do quite as much there. Maybe you want to focus more on providing that necessary summary from the text. The narratio is a good place to define terms, okay? Um, so if there are specific terms that the reader needs to understand, if I was writing a paper about active and passive euthanasia, well, guess what? Not everyone knows what those terms means. So I need to make sure that I am defining them clearly um, that probably should not be the entire focus of the narratio, but you could do it somewhere where it's just natural. So that sounds like just a lot of freedom and that the narratio can be shaped really however you want it to be shaped, but that's really the truth. Um, don't try to clutter your narratio with just a comprehensive summary of all the facts. Think of the most important set of background information and present that. So I wanted to return to the thesis statement for the paper just to remind you of what the argument is for this sample paper that we're working with in this video series. Abel is accepted due to his trust in God's promise and not his moral perfection, for Abel is presented in the New Testament as one who is counted righteous due to his faith, while Cain is presented as a spiritual forefather of hypocrites, right? So in other words, Abel is accepted not because of God's preference for animal sacrifices over vegetation, but rather because Abel's sacrifice was offered in faith. Now, in the narratio, this student for this sample paper decided to go through some of the most important elements of that narrative of the murder of Abel and the offering up of those sacrifices. So let's take a look and see what this student does. He begins by saying, Genesis 4 portrays Cain as one who is rejected due to his own moral failure, 
although the precise nature of the failure is less clear. Notice how the first sentence of the narratio is a topic sentence that summarizes the main idea of this whole paragraph, right? It's basically stating this idea, Genesis 4 portrays Cain's rejection as being his own fault. Um, everything else is a little bit less clear. So the narratio is basically just covering that narrative for us. When Cain's offering is rejected by God, he is filled with anger presumably at Abel for receiving the blessing and at God for favoring his brother over him. Yet God warns Cain, why are you angry and why has your face fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is contrary to you, but you must rule over it. But Cain does not heed the words of his creator and kills Abel. God, in response to this crime, tells Cain that the voice of Abel's blood cries to him from the ground. Consequently, the ground will not yield to Cain its strength, and Cain shall be a fugitive and wanderer on the earth. The consequences of Cain's sin are an amplification of Adam's curse. While Adam is exiled from Eden and must now toil to cause the earth to produce food, fruit, Cain must be a perpetual wanderer on an earth which will never again yield fruit due to his labors. Ironically, the punishment of Cain seems also to amplify God's rejection of his offering, as Cain is incapable of again presenting an offering of vegetation to the Lord. Abel, on the other hand, dies a death that resembles his own offering, a bloody sacrifice. So what does this narratio do well? As I said before, it states clearly its objective. It's going to communicate to us the most important aspects of the story. Notice that it's not presenting to us a linear argument. It is using some integrated quotations to very concisely highlight some of the most important features of the narrative story. It reflects on Cain's cursedness and also Abel's uh, uh, martyrdom. And that's all important background information. The reader is going to need to understand this story in order for the argument that comes later to make sense. Now, not every narratio is going to look like this. Maybe your narratio paragraph is going to focus on just explaining both sides of the controversy more fully if you didn't get to do that in the exordium. Maybe your narratio, it, it needs to spend more time defining key terms, but really my encouragement is find a topic sentence that encapsulates the main idea, okay? Um, it could be the definition of a term, and then you could go on and flesh out those definitions throughout the rest of that paragraph, or maybe the first sentence of your narratio uh, can explain a historical trend, sum summarize it, and then the rest of that paragraph can walk through that historical trend. Just make sure that the narratio, it contains all of the necessary background information for the reader so that they can understand your argument. I'm saying that very repeatedly because it's important. And the last thing I wanted to say is, remember that most of your papers should not be summary of plot, most of your papers should be engagement. So the narratio might be a good place to just sort of consolidate all of that summary so that you don't have to do that for the vast majority of your paper. I hope that helped. I'll see you all in the next video.